in my pipe and smoke it. <laughs> yeah, put that in your long Native American pipe with a dash of elk scrotum and then smoke that. <laughs> and suck it. <laughs> Gross. <laughs> friends welcome to user friendly the show where roberto and myself erfan elijah talk about all things that are sleek <laughs> our favorite things on the web and technology that we very much enjoy i hate people that call it the web <laughs> oh, really sorry the interwebs <laughs> i know you like that sorry. better uh, you might know me from the Cultcast podcast. If you do, welcome to seeing my face. <laughs> uh, we're going to be doing a video Cultcast as well pretty soon. I've so heard. you can see the other people's as well. But I'm here with my friend Roberto. Roberto Hoyos from throwboy.com. Makers of the coolest pillows you know. Boyfriend of Lonnie G. <laughs> no. <laughs> That's not what Lonnie G told me. That's not. <laughs> he told me you're his boyfriend. Discussable on the show. <laughs> He told me you're his boyfriend, whether you like it or not. <laughs> <laughs> and then he held up a bottle that had like these three X's on it. And he shook it at me. He had like a napkin next to it. Did he have it. his uh, switchblade? <laughs> he did have a switchblade. Actually, a comb. He doesn't go anywhere without a switchblade <laughs> comb. Yeah, he like because he flips it out and you get startled and then he goes. Yeah, th right through the curls. Yeah, <laughs> and you're like, and then he rapes you. But then you still are scared. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, man. So we're back at it again. Again, indeed. Um, I had a cool little tweet come through uh, that said something about our show. First time listening nice. to at I'm user friendly. That's I us. don't know how he found that URL, by the way, because we never promote it. <laughs> On Twitter? <laughs> yeah. First time listening to user friendly podcast. Very enjoyable, casual podcast. Thank with you. Some great opinions. Check it out. Thanks, Jack Spencer. Hey, Jack Spencer. New viewer slash listener. Hopefully you're still listening watching. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of audio, uh, if you are an audio listener, mm -hmm. I will have the audio up <laughs> sometime soon. <laughs> it's been a mixture of just being extraordinarily busy and then technical problems. I did yeah. have some technical problems. Yeah, it happens. That I'm not totally sure we've, we've fig figured out, so hopefully we've got those fixed. Yeah. Um, Any hooskies. I won't place the blame anywhere but just tweet at air <laughs> but it's air <laughs> i won't i don't want to say it but it's air fault hey so i'm on my new macbook pro yeah finally. is it light as a feather oh man it's it's actually really crazy how much different it is it doesn't it doesn't really feel that much lighter until you open it up and then all of a sudden it just it really does it feels a lot lighter does it feel more solid even than your last one it does feel more solid i and guess it's totally silent yeah, I was going to say, like, even just mentally, because you know there's nothing moving in there. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. There's no and, hamsters in there anymore. Uh, they took the hamsters out. Yeah. I know that for sure. They were dead in your old one. <laughs> yeah, I think there's one still panting and running, <laughs> but uh, he was getting tired for sure. Uh -huh. So, yeah, it's really nice. Um, I don't know I don't know how I feel about paying 2400 bucks for it, but... <laughs> this reminded me, I was just listening uh -huh. to the Matt cast, uh -huh. and um, they were talking about how, like... A lot of us will buy this gear that we were like, I'm gonna uh, write the, I'm gonna make this amazing Hollywood movie on it, or I'm gonna write, the, I'm gonna make the best uh, American rock band album on it, <laughs> and then we never do. We just want the gear that could do it, you know. <laughs> this is so Adam was talking about that. Uh, the, the the guest that he had on that said that. That's interesting because that's a topic I wanted to talk about on Cultcast too. It's just overbuying. Mm -hmm. You feel like you you need to have like the highest highest end product, and I swear there's something wrong with us. <laughs> and you really don't. And and even this thing, I'm like, man, did I really need to get the top of the line MacBook Pro? Was, I don't know, but I have it now. It's one of those things. Yeah, you can't go back once you do it. You know. Yeah. It's like. Yeah. Getting a new car and then getting it home and be like, damn it, should I have Did gotten I, a brand new car uh, or should I have brand new one. gotten a used car? But um, I love it so far and uh, I had to end up having to buy the Firewire adapter, which I was right. not happy, not tailpipe. too happy about. Hashtag tailpipe. <laughs> Hashtag tailpipe stick. <laughs> and uh, after my tailpipe healed, I've actually <laughs> discovered that I really do like it. It's really, uh, there was a lot of like negative reviews for people who I guess are having problems using it for mechanical hard drives, because on a Firewire drive oh. on the older MacBook Pros, 
I guess that thing pumped out quite a bit of wattage to power the drives. Oh, okay. And the adapter doesn't pump out as much. But for what I've been using it for, which has been my compact flash card reader, mm -hmm. um, which doesn't require much power, and then also my powered hard drives, oh. it works great. So I'm so actually super really fast. Super fast. I mean, just as fast as if I were using a firewire drive plugged right into the computer. Yeah. Cool. So I'm really happy with it. So your um, your other one is wiped yet, or you're still transferring? No, I'm still using it. Oh, okay. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with it yet. <laughs> I've had a few I've had a few people ask me yeah on Twitter like what I'm gonna do with it, and I've had a few people be like, I'd be interested in buying it from you. And I'm <laughs> Sign like, it. Maybe I can sign the top. Yeah, yeah. Then I'm like, it does kind of have a little bit of sentimental value because <laughs> I started cult cast on that machine. Oh yeah. And actually, I'm actually still technically editing the cult cast on that machine because I don't have the, my old version of GarageBand on here yet. I was gonna say like you're on. This is the newest OS, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, is there gonna be any sort of things that aren't gonna work well for you anymore if you're using GarageBand? Because Not that I found. I, I can't use the new GarageBand on this to edit the show. Why? Um, well, I've, I, from free, what I understood, you know. yeah, well, so is the other GarageBand. <laughs> um, from what I understand, it doesn't have as many features as the previous version. But not only that is I have everything set up. Like when I go to an episode, I'm sure you do the same thing. You know where everything is. Oh yeah. And I have my templates, like my my, my levels templates in place, so I know oh. where everything needs to be like adjusted. And it's and from the, the old GarageBand still. Yeah, on the old GarageBand. Oh, okay. So I might just stay with the old GarageBand because I've heard people complain that they're not happy with the new one. I heard the new one. This one, this is a sucky thing. Um, so Adam from the Matt cast. Mm -hmm. Um, he was saying that the new GarageBand is what he's, there, he's been editing his show probably on GarageBand like since it came out. Mm -hmm. And the new GarageBand just got rid of all of the um, podcast features where you can put in photos into the thing. Wow. Into like, they call it enhanced podcast. So, so sometimes like if you're listening to it on your iPhone, uh, as he's talking about something, it will show artwork. And it's yes. not technically a video, it just shows like artwork. And he uses it to highlight his sponsors. Right. And so now they strip that completely out. Wow. So now he has to stay on the old one, like for as long as he can until I, until I guess till the iTunes player strips it out completely because they probably don't want it in there, you know? I don't know. Do you think that maybe, I mean, it could just be a case where they, you know, Final Cut Pro tend it. Where they just released it and it didn't have a lot of features that people liked, but they're like, let's just get this thing out the door and then fix it. I guess though, maybe but they'll like, add them back in. I mean, that they have a bigger stake in let's make Final Cut Pro people happy, but what kind of stake do they have in let's make little podcasters happy? Like, it's completely free mm. on their website. They host a crap load of them. Yeah, you know, and it's like, but you know that you would think that they would want to give you a tool to create and edit podcasts because they they're pushing to. podcasts so hard. I mean, are I mean, they still push pushing them? Uh, dude, yeah. I mean, podcasts are more popular than ever, I feel like. And uh, they have like the, a, a standalone podcast app. Yeah. It's just like the iBook store. They give you a tool <clears throat> to create iBooks. Yeah. I would think that they would want to give you something for podcasts. I don't think that one's doing gangbusters, though. The I, What is it called? The iBooks author? <clears throat> I think people thought yeah. that was going to be crazy, and like you don't hear about it anymore. No, I don't think you ever hear anyone talk about it. At um, least I don't. It's sort of like an Xcode type thing, except that one has a lot more gain for them because they make money off the apps, mm -hmm. you know? So like they might put out like these little things, like these little houses. Yeah, here's your podcast thing, but they don't really do much with it, you know? Like... I mean, to There's geeks, so the features. podcast app is sucky, you know? They think it's... like I like it. I know <coughs> there are a lot of people that don't like it. I, I do like it. I yeah, use I it. Um, I don't know. It's yeah. free, and it does work well enough for me. Oh, you know what I would love to see them do? Um, is give, give us a way to monetize podcasts. We have people ask us to do a non-commercial stream. They're like, I would pay you yeah. for a non-commercial stream. Like, no ads, you know, just... Just do the raw show, edit it a little bit, and then put it out, and I would pay you like five bucks a month. And I would love to do something like that, but we literally have absolutely no way to do it. Yeah, there's no... Because iTunes doesn't let you do it. Right, there's no like um, in-app purchase thing or something. Yes, there know? should be like an in-app purchase, yeah. and it's like you can listen to this show or listen to another show by subscription. Mm -hmm. I mean, YouTube even has that now. Now they have paid channels. Yeah, but it, it, kind, of, <clears throat> it, it kind of bombed really hard because they... They tried to sign up like brands. They're like, mm -hmm. oh, this is like the Sesame Street paid channel and stuff. Oh. And it was, and then 
basically like the big YouTubers like I Justine were like, uh, we're not gonna use that because it will alienate all of our like 13 year olds that don't have any money. So how are they gonna pay for our videos, you know? Right. So they rolled it out in a really crummy way and it never took off. I don't even know if that's still around to be honest. Because remember they, they, they still have like <clears throat> movie rentals I think on YouTube. If you typed in like Con Air, you'll be like the first one will be like, you wanna <laughs> rent it for three ninety nine, you know? But nobody uh -huh. rents it through there. Nope. Yeah, you know? I, I think it's like a disconnect with YouTube and who their actual audience is. This might surprise you guys. We've been to VidCon. VidCon, which is like the YouTube convention. Not twice. By, not by Google, but like <laughs> people who are enthusiastic. Like yeah, their yeah. core audience. Mm -hmm. And YouTube's core audience are kids. Oh yeah. And so when the, I hear about renting movies, when I hear about the paid stuff, it really does make sense. It's like, do you know who uses your product? Because yeah. this doesn't seem like they would like these features. Maybe they're trying to go after guys like us. It's weird. I mean, it's just like this new thing. Have you heard about the the big uproar about uh, Google Plus integrating with YouTube? Or you've been, I haven't have heard you the had your head in the sand? Actually, I did a ton of research about <laughs> Google Plus today. You mean Google Plus or Google Hangouts on air? No. Okay, so w what's happening? So, okay, so well, this week, um, Google Plus got basically fully integrated with YouTube. Mm -hmm. So unless you have uh, a you, or unless you have a Google Plus link to your YouTube account, you can't leave comments anymore. So like oh um, and I think that there might be some way you can still leave comments but you can't actually reply to the comment. Like at me as a creator that post that posts videos, I can't reply to anybody's comment that isn't uh, linked to a Google Plus account. So like that's usually how you, you get kind of a, a conversation going in your comments. Mm -hmm. And now there'll be comments like in my video that I'm like, why is there no reply? I can't tell that person thanks or I can't say anything back to them. And it's because their account isn't linked to a Google Plus account. Right, so they've been trying to that do it. That seems like an odd way to set it up because why would they not let you reply yeah. because of something they did. Well, because they want to basically strong arm everybody to use Google+. Plus. Because, I mean, Google+, Plus, arguably, since the beginning, has never been an organic social network. It was like, you have a Gmail? Well, guess what? You're on Google+, Plus now, too, you know? Yeah, right. So, like, it's been trying to keep doing that, and now this is, like, the big one where they've basically taken, like, their hottest social network, YouTube, and made it, like, you need Google+, Plus now. You have to use it. And anytime you do any interaction, like, if you leave a comment on somebody... Like, let's say Airfon leaves a comment on my video. It will say, uh, Airfon has just shared this to Google+. And it's like sharing the video. And I'm like, whoa, Airfon's sharing a lot of stuff to Google+. Like, there's a lot of friends now wow. that they don't realize that they're sharing to their Google+. And basically, it's just dumping any activity that you do on YouTube onto your Google Plus page. Wow. Like, think about if that was your Facebook, right? Yeah. It's dumping everything into your main feed <clears throat> that you're that you're doing That's on not a cool totally different all. network because yeah. they own it, right? So, like, everybody is like pissed. Like, everyone thinks it's terrible. But I'm like, it's messed up. To, it's funny to me, and this probably might sound cynical. I just think that like, people on YouTube, especially like these kids you're talking about. They have this love for YouTube. They they have this connection with these people, and I understand that. But YouTube is owned by the one of the biggest corporations in the world. Mm -hmm. They don't give a crap if this is like your home and this is where you hang out. They <laughs> want to figure out ways to make money with the damn website. Yeah. You know. So when the website is going too corporate <clears throat> or there's too many ads, yeah. That's how it is, man. Like you're not <laughs> you. People are trying to sign like f you, man. People are corporate trying, America. But I mean, like people are trying to sign like online petitions or like get it back to the way it was. And I'm like, nothing never happens. is going yeah. to happen. It's like when Facebook changes their design and everyone goes in a total rage. It's like they don't care. Yeah, it's like that. But it's a probably even more because it's like this. This company makes a crap load of money. This company <laughs> is a business. You know. Yeah. Like. At least they're trying to make money off it. I mean, it just seems funny to me. I'm like, yeah, I get it. You want it, you want it to be like your little thing, and I wish it was the way it was, and I wish it would never change, but it's owned by Google. Like, it's owned by Google, <laughs> you know? But anyway, it's messed up, though. Um, it's not a good user experience. And even, I'm glad that there are bigger YouTubers, like, actually talking about it. Because I feel like a lot of the times they don't want to like bite the hand that feeds them. Sure, you yeah. Know? So they don't want to say anything. But then usually what happens is one big one will say it, and then it will like start a cascade. And everyone talks because I was like, oh, it's okay to like talk shit about <laughs> this. Oh, you know? Yeah, cool. I hate Google Plus. <laughs> yeah. And it, a lot of their products to me are so confusing. I spent so much time today researching. So we're going to be doing this live cult cast thing. Yeah. And just trying to figure out how everything's going to work. And. 
I mean, there's like YouTube Live and there's Google oh, right. Hangouts on air, and now the yeah. two are integrated in some way. And it's very murky, and I'm not totally sure how everything works. Yeah, because all they, they're starting to blend all these services together, and it's really not clear to me like what service is still an independent service and what service has now become something else. It's like Google Chat's gone now; it's Google Hangouts, right? And then yeah. you chat through Hangouts. <clears throat> yeah, 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 and and yeah. The hangout thing is sort of like chat in your Gmail. Yeah, it's it's all very like kind it's of super fit, confusing fuzzy. now. Um, the other thing though is just kind of like, what is your? Do you really think like all the kids that are hanging out watching like I Justine and like Joey Graceffa? Do you think they're really going to go now and socialize on Google Plus now because you made them sign up into it? Like, do you think that's gonna be their new hangout place? I don't know what they're I'm like, thinking. Like, it's so inorganic. Like, that's the thing, man. Any of these big websites that that take off and that get traction, and then maybe get sold or something, they have like an organic activity. You know, like yeah. Daily Booth, Snapchat, um, Instagram, like mm -hmm. all of these Vine, like all of these, they just come up and people like the experience. It's not like oh, you have this, you have a Yahoo account, we're gonna make you use our new thing. Until you actually use it, we're gonna make you use it, you know? Yes, it's, um, yeah. Or like it's if Facebook like, did it, you know? Like, I don't know, it's just weird. It's like, they feel like slapping these products together is gonna make you wanna use them. When, you know, like when you go to a website and a pop-up comes up and it's like, would you like to take our, <coughs> at our survey? Yeah. Or would you like to like us on Facebook? It's like even if I was going to, now I won't. Yeah. Because you're you it's it's so intrusive yeah. that it makes you not want to use those other experiences. Like when you go to Flickr now, there's Yahoo oh Mail and God. freaking Yahoo yeah. this and Yahoo that Yahoo at the Sports. top. And it's like, oh my <laughs> gosh, that wasn't the problem. Yeah. That's not gonna make me use those services more. It's not like I didn't know they existed. It, it just I just don't want to use them because I don't like using Yahoo products. The other thing too is like a lot of these websites that that get really big, they get, they start by getting big with kids, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And kids aren't kids think it's like instantly lame if you're trying to be like we're Facebook and yeah, our, like we're already kind of like old and dated, but we're going to put out poke and it's gonna be just like Snapchat. And you guys are gonna love it. It's like, it's already, d doesn't that just sound already lame, you know? Like they're not gonna use it. They wanna use the things that like, people aren't really using, you know? Like they're trying to, use, they're, they're on Snapchat because their parents aren't on Snapchat, you know? Uh -huh. They're on Instagram because their parents aren't on Instagram, right? Or it's like the new cool thing that just yeah. kind of like, takes hook organically, like you said. Yeah, and it's like, they don't want to hang out where like all the nerds are on Google Plus, where there's just like nerd talk. I don't think anyone you know? wants to use Google Plus. I mean, the only guys, the only people I see that are popular on Google Plus, are fifty-year-old men who are tech journalists. Yeah, exactly. Like those are the only people that are popular on Google Plus. I have no idea who uses it. Yeah, um, I think even Chris Perlow was saying that. You know, so it's like, and he's a big YouTuber now. And so, is he really? Yeah. Oh, um, yeah, YouTuber. I was, I was thinking, I was thinking you were saying um, Google Plus. Google Pluser. He is, <laughs> he is big on there too. But even he knows the scope of like where it's actually. It's, yeah, know. very small. Yeah. Anyway. In any case, um, <laughs> I don't even know how we got onto that conversation, but Me we either. do have some other topics to talk about this show. Hey, you wanted to talk about one of your favorite foods, um, the the burrito. <laughs> <laughs> and after that racism I wasn't racist <laughs> that is that is a traditional uh, Latin American celebration sound <laughs> yeah. all right we'll move on then okay uh, I'm sending this to you <laughs> okay cool um, yeah I found this on a friend of mine posted this on Facebook this is a uh, on medium.com which is basically Damn. like a place where people write stuff is it, it, can anyone write stuff? Yeah. On Medium? Yeah. Didn't one of the Twitter guys start this? Yeah. Uh, Ev Williams, I think, started it. Um, but anyway, so <laughs> I'll, 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 I'll take a video of this because uh, this was funny, funny. It's uh, basically this guy went to a burrito place and it's called Dear Guy Who Just Made My Burrito. And as you <laughs> can see, it's split up like into sections. <laughs> So it's like, if, for audio listeners, I don't even need to read it. guacamole, this, rice, 
beans, meat, sour cream section, so, cilantro, cheese, and a lettuce section. And this like, this like goes a, from lo- it's from long side of the burrito to the other long side yeah, of the burrito. Yeah, yeah. So it goes from left to right, so then from top to bottom. <laughs> right. If this was top to bottom, this would have been a great burrito setup. Sure, sure, sure. But this is obviously a confused white teenager who made this. <laughs> I don't know how you can make that though. Like, how do you put little scoops That's true, into it? Because he probably would have had to like roll it up and then tilt it upwards <laughs> yeah. and then put everything in that way. <laughs> It basically is like, um, like what are those things called? Like a trifle or something? Like where they have like uh-huh. different layer foods or anything. Anyway, let me read this. Yeah. I've never read this before. Okay, uh, he'll censor a little. Dear bit. guy, yeah, I'm gonna have to censor it so this this episode isn't full of cuss words. Dear guy who just made my burrito, have you been to Earth? <laughs> On Earth, we use the word burrito to describe a, t- a tortilla filled with things you eat. Pretty simple stuff. And I'm surprised you at least got that part right. My burrito was, in fact, filled with food. In this, you and I agreed and are friends. But this is where my lifelong hatred begins for you. And anyone else whose brain has been repeatedly scrubbed with the same mixture of bleach and pop rocks as yours has. Because that should have killed you, but left you long, <laughs> left you around long enough to do what you did to me today. Let me explain. You're an idiot. <laughs> Let me further explain. (laughs) Burritos are eaten from one end to the other. So that means that when you assemble a burrito, the mother effing zones of ingredients going that direction, you create a disgusting experience for the burrito's end user. When you make a burrito, sorry, a burrito, you should put the ingredients in the layers lengthwise. That way, every bite has at least one effing chance of getting at least two types of ingredients. And there's little little chance of becoming almost hopelessly trapped in a goddamn <laughs> cilantro cavern. So Seriously, who puts good. a burrito together like this? I like that these things are numbered. Have you ever eaten one of the things that you make all effing day? You should try one. They are pretty good when you are not willing yourself through the effing empire of sour cream only to end up in lettuce country. <laughs> When you eat a burrito, you don't stand it up and bite down on it lengthwise like an effing rancor. I don't even know what that means. What's a rancor? I don't know. I gotta look that up. I'll look it up. Oh, yeah. It's a... Okay. Rancor? Yeah, I don't think it's... Keep going. Yeah. Humans can't usually dislocate their jaws. It's the thing from Star Wars. (laughs) It's that monster from Star Wars. That was a great, that was a great piece right there. Then. <laughs> oh, he just puts the whole thing in his mouth and swallows it. <laughs> and I'm not an effing pelican. <laughs> but you must think that's how it's done, since that would be the only effing way to take a bite of your crap, craptrocity and have it taste like a burrito. <laughs> and guess what else, player? You probably can't guess anything, because I'm pretty sure you're just a mop with a hat on it that <laughs> fell over and spilled some shite onto a tortilla. But just in case, here's what. Humans don't don't eat burritos like effing corn on the cob. <laughs> like, a t- like an effing typewriter from one end to the other, a little bit of, a, of a, a little bit at a time, and then ding, next line. But today I wish I had tried that, because at least then I would have been able to eat some beans, rice, and then be like, hey, Beans, I'll be right back. Just going over here to the guacamole for a second. <laughs> nope. My experience is more like, hey, Beans, it's going to be just you and me for a minute until I can effing excavate the rice from beneath you. <laughs> but by then, you'll be a fading memory. Oh, hey, I was, I was wrong. <laughs> I'm in the wrong effing cheesosphere. Now rice must be next. I hope it's not another effing salsa pocket. <laughs> You built this thing like an effing pack of lifesavers. <laughs> that's the, that's exactly what happened. And don't even don't even effing think I'm about to shite up. I'm about to open this shite up and re-engineer your nonsense to 90 degrees. I already put a hole in it with my effing mouth. Yeah, that's how I discovered you effing suck at looking at things. I am not going to do effing tortilla origami to get this shite back together. <laughs> Only end up with a burrito that's been shot in the gut and is bleeding because of your ineptitude. <laughs> What's that? 
I should just ask you to mix it up. Mix it up for first <laughs> next time. Is this Jamba Juice? <laughs> I don't want to drink my effing burrito through a bendy straw. And I don't want a pile of burrito soup in a flour can. I just want a burrito. In conclusion, you're the worst thing that has ever happened to the universe. You owe everyone an apology for this burrito abomination. And I hope your babies look like monkeys. <laughs> your burrito abomination. <laughs> Oh, um, my mouth hurts. Yeah. The picture is perfect. <laughs> so funny. Uh, can you, how do you really do that? I don't know. Unless you, like you said, you make like a, a cylinder and you start dumping things into it, you know? Yeah, I don't know how. I mean, I doubt it was quite this perfectly constructed. <laughs> yeah. It wasn't quite like I think of Lifesavers, but... Um, <laughs> oh, gosh. Oh, I love burritos. That made me want one now. I usually get the bowl, burrito bowl, so it wouldn't be any issue. For Where do you? Me. Where's the best burrito in Seattle? Oh, I can't say. I Where do you go when burritos like? I need a burrito. They have good ones at Qdoba. Oh, Qdoba is good. I think I think yeah. I think I like it better than um. Bo what is the other one called? Chipotle. 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 Yeah. Mm, I uh, I haven't been to a Qdoba in a long time. I like Chipotle. I live too. right right by one. Um. And sometimes I go there. Like after I think five, it's like five bucks for one. And usually they're is it like really? really. That's expensive. a great deal. Yeah, usually it's like stupid stuff. Like you want guacamole? Oh, that's like two dollars extra for a scoop. You know? Oh, I know. I hate <laughs> that. Oh, you want some sour cream? Yeah. Of course I want sour cream. Everyone always wants sour cream. It's a burrito. <laughs> I don't know why. Like, I think back in the day. Yeah. At least my dad tells me this. He said, when we moved here guacamole and avocados were like a rare thing. You couldn't get them all the time. But now really? you can get them all the time. So yeah. why are they still charging you crazy expensive prices for freaking avocados? Because they can. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's talk about um, Ed's sad Etsy boyfriend, shall we? Yeah. Um, so cool me, website Roberto found. Let me, um, this, is all, this episode's all about stuff on the web. Stuff that I found on stuff the web. Stuff that you found on the web. <clears throat> all right, my favorite things on the web. Um, okay. Yeah, so this is called Focus Sad Etsy Boyfriends .com, mm -hmm. dedicated to the wretched creatures abused for economic <laughs> gains by their Etsy girlfriends. This guy looks like a nostalgia critic. Uh, so basically, it's just a, a blog, and I think it just got going. That is all <laughs> boyfriends that are posing with their like <laughs> disgusting Etsy creations from their girlfriends. Like this guy's weird stripy uh, windbreaker thing. I don't really know. It looks like duct tape on a windbreaker. <laughs> <laughs> this guy looks so like God. Get it over with. I thought that guy was like uh, like a. I don't know what's the PC term for it. Like a midget. Oh, uh, he looks kind of like an American Apparel. Or like ad. his arms are bent in a very strange way. He's so uncomfortable. What's he wearing? Is he just that wearing like that? Bad crochet that scarf. Really bad scarf. <laughs> it's hard to see on this video. <laughs> it's so like first crochet project ever. <laughs> Fifteen dollars. <laughs> <laughs> this guy's face. What is he wearing? So like it looks like a goodwill sweater. Like I don't think that Well, you know what's funny is people actually buy stuff from like Goodwill and they sell it on Etsy. Did you know that? You know what? It's funny you should mention that. I've actually done that before. Oh, really? Yeah. You just put the word vintage in front of it. Yeah, I didn't know that. <laughs> because um, people pay like for Levi's, for like worn in old Levi's. Uh -huh. People love that stuff. I haven't done it in, in years and years, but yeah, I've done I it should before. do that. I'm, I've been getting better at finding things at thrift stores lately. Anyway. Yeah, and you're you go to them a lot anyway. <laughs> what the hell is that thing? <laughs> He's like not even. He's just like, yeah, put it on me, and we'll just, just get it me. over with. I don't care. Yeah. I don't just put it on. <laughs> oh gosh! <laughs> what is that guy wearing? <laughs> that is like the poster child. He has for this. so much armpit hair. <laughs> I mean, and it's it's kind of weird because he's a ginger. Yeah, and it's like a different color than his beard hair, which is bright red. For all of our audio listeners, let me just describe. Oh, We're yeah. looking at a shirtless man. I think he's selling a... Sorry. No, it's fine. I was looking at the monstrosity in the next picture. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this. What is that guy wearing? <laughs> it's like a dream catcher on his head. He looks like he's wearing Erica Badu's hat. <laughs> and it has earrings taped to it. Yeah, it does look like <laughs> earrings, right? It looks like Erica Badu's headpiece. Who's buying that? I really wish... Does, do these link out to the... 
too. Oh, they, they do. do. <laughs> oh, nice. Diamond grid. E- so someone thought it would be a good idea to, to tie those earrings to some dude's hat. This is supposed to be a guy's turban, I guess. Oh, <laughs> oh, I get it. It's just the earrings, not the actual hat. No, the hat's not Why included. Why the hell would this be? <laughs> this was deliberately done so they could be on this website. <laughs> that is like the worst presentation of earrings I've ever seen. Um, Very strange. Anyway, yeah, so this is just a site full of this. And I thought it was a funny idea. Because this is the kind of crap you see. Like, I sell on Etsy, throwboy.etsy.com. And... Um, I don't do most of my sales through there, uh-huh. but I like I now explore it more. Mm-hmm. And I mean, it's it kind of boggles my mind like how much really garbagey stuff is on there. Uh-huh. Cause like, I mean, I don't know. I don't like to say that I'm like awesome, but whenever I type in something similar to what I do, like if I'm looking up like Spider Man plushie, mm-hmm. there's like so many terrible ones. Oh, there. I believe you that. You know, and I'm just like. How is there not somebody who's like eons better than my stuff, you know? Well, you do it professionally. I bet you a lot of these people are just, they just try something. Yeah, I guess. And it's so easy to get set up on Etsy. Yeah. That I just figure like it's such a big marketplace. It that is. That you would find like a lot of good stuff. But you find like a ton of really not <laughs> like, good like stuff. Mostly just crap. Yeah. And every um, once in a while, you'll find something that's like halfway decent. Yeah, but I, I I definitely buy from there sometimes, you know, and you find some cool stuff. But yeah, yeah. I never knew about the the vintage clothes angle. That's kind of cool. Uh, it's kind of cool in terms of like, could you make money doing that? You know, you probably could, <laughs> but you probably would have to work really hard to find good stuff. Yeah, and you'd have to be like, just some people are really good at that, man. They can walk into like a like one of those Goodwills where you just dig through the bins and find yeah. like really cool stuff, you know? I wonder if you could do that in Seattle. You probably could do it more now, but I feel like Seattle maybe for a lot of years didn't have the best fashion sense. Mm. So unless you wanted like an old REI ja- jacket, or like an oh, old REI yeah. windbreaker. You can find some cool stuff that like has come back since, you know? That's yeah. like, oh, this was definitely like a whatever from the 80s, but now people yeah. like it, you Dude, know? Dude, now if you find some MC Hammer pants... No, not like that. <laughs> at, at Goodwill, <laughs> those things are probably worth like $12 now. <laughs> um, They've gone back up in value. But you're right. The, the, I was just talking to my friend about this. Like, Seattle's fashion sense, it just... I, I don't know. I don't. I hope I'm not going to offend you. Like, I just... I get depressed whenever I see people, like, it becomes fall, and then everybody breaks out their North Face fleece, and that's all they wear for the next... Oh. Four or five I agree, months. but I feel like it's, it's getting disgusting. a lot. I feel like it's getting a lot better. We have a lot of people like a lot you don't of have one of those, do you? A North Face windbreaker? No, I don't. Okay. I used to though. Wow, not a North Face. It's such a like it's lazy Seattle thing, weird. dude. It is. It very you much wake is. up, you yeah. put your t-shirt on, you put your jeans on, and you put on your North Face, and you're done. Yeah, and you wear that for the next four months. Yeah, right. <laughs> I know what you're saying. And it, by the it's way, depressing. This is North Face. <laughs> No. This is my first piece of North Face gear in probably five years. Do but you feel like it's awesome? I love it's it. Worth the money you spent on? I got it at Nordstrom Rack, so yeah, oh, I do. Okay. I got it like super I, duper on sale. I think the fleeces, which are basically like They're like one hundred seventy dollars, feeling fleece, are like a hundred dollars. Yeah, those things are I think so fleece great is though. Nasty because I work with it all day. Yeah, so I think it's not a suitable material to put on your body. And they, it stretches a lot yeah. too. It gets super <laughs> stretched out. It's good for throwaway pillows. Oh it's man, it's not good for putting on your body. It's disgusting. We do. We have that problem in Seattle. <laughs> People just dress up. I mean, <clears throat> REI, which is this outdoor store, it, yeah. it, they sell a lot yeah. of cool stuff. But it's like windbreakers and all this. <laughs> it's, it's been the same since the 90s. It's like windbreakers and yeah. fleeces and then... Ponchos. Ponchos. <laughs> and then you see those pe- people in those just absolutely ridiculous uh, five-toed shoe uh, when they're at the gym. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just like hybrid outdoorsy clothes, but yeah. like very like not a very good fashion sense. And it's interesting. You go to places like Europe. <clears throat> um, I know that's a big place, but like, you know, Austria <laughs> or something. And you see the way people are dressed and yeah. it's very apparent yeah. That people put a lot more effort into their dress. Sure, than they yeah. Do here. I think it's. I think it's. I don't know. It's probably. Sometimes it can kind of give you a sense of like what <laughs> that person is. <laughs> Sorry, I'm like. listening to you. What are you doing? Uh, I just. I since we were on a Tumblr site, I've been trying to get to this Benedict Cumberbatch name generator on my phone for like four weeks, so it doesn't work on what my is phone. That? Do you know who Benedict Cumberbatch is? I thought we talked about this on this show. Uh-uh. 
He's a really famous British actor. He he played Khan <coughs> in the in the most recent Star Trek. That's him. Oh yeah, it is him. That is him. That looks like Mickey Rourke. <laughs> and, and there's a Benedict Cumberbatch name generator. Uh -huh. And when you press it, it makes names that aren't his name but sound like they could be his name. Oh. Uh, so Wellington Stinky Rash. <laughs> <laughs> Some of these are dumb. Benadryl. Buttermilk Clomby Clomp. I wonder how many it Blubber will Wills, Snuggle Snatch. I swear. <laughs> That's cool. We talked about this. No, one. no, we Snuggle didn't. Dink <laughs> <laughs> Snorkel Dink Abort. Snorkel Dink. Bandicoot. Uh, Brendan Berg, Crumplehorn, Honky Tonk, Oxford Fire, Billiard Ball, Creamsicle. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, sorry. Hey, let's wrap up. All right. With a, with a joke. Knock, knock. Who's there? A really bad app. <laughs> a really bad app. A really bad app that Here doesn't make any sense. <laughs> <coughs> oh boy, but it has a nice website. That's all you need. The website is actually really quite nice. I all you need is a nice website. Do 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 do. That was not good. All you need is a nice website. Site. And you'll sell your app. <laughs> a website's all you need. So this is called knock, hence the knock knock joke. Mandatory required guy with a beard. Yeah. He's kind of sexing you up there, Fong. He was. Oh. Hi. Was that his penis? Booyah! I think he just knocked on his penis. <laughs> He's like, you want to knock on my penis? What just happened? For the audio listeners, we're looking at a empty apartment loft <laughs> and a guy with a laptop on a table. Knocking on his phone. And every time he does that, his computer unlocks. Yeah. It's a Bluetooth powered. And he's sexing you up again. Ooh. I feel like that's exactly the kind of pitch you would do in Kickstarter. You'd just be like, yeah, <laughs> making him be, eyes the whole be, time. Yeah. <laughs> actually is a good approach, I think. Um, so... Uh? I guess for me, I <laughs> this this seems pretty. This seems like it would be cool. Like some people would actually use it. Like it seems like it would actually be useful. This would is, you use it though? No, you is know, is it free too? Is my this other is the question. same kind of amount of usefulness that like Bump has. You know? Yeah, maybe a little, I think, little I bit think, more. I think yeah, I see what you're saying there. I mean, this this could be more useful. I think to me personally, Bump. Was one of those things that <clears throat> I thought was cool, but no one ever wanted to use. Yeah. Knock app. Um, yeah, I, I wonder if they sold because they probably had cool technology. Anyway, oh, interesting. So uh, they want. So what is it? What? So it's an app. It costs four bucks. Yeah. And you need to have a compatible Mac, and then you need to have your Bluetooth on, obviously, all the time. So what this allows you to do is connect um, with your iPhone to your Mac via Bluetooth, mm -hmm. and then when you knock on your phone it unlocks your computer so i guess my question is well do you have to have the the app open on your phone at all times to do uh, this and then so it has to go you have to do iphone and mac that's how it works yes you have to have it you see so you, you're essentially paying i think for the iphone app oh okay so you, um, you don't need a mac app i don't think so click the download button and see isn't that where you are? I think that's where you are. I didn't click that, though. Oh. oh, it just downloads it. Oh, so you have to have it on your Mac, too. Oh, it downloads its own thing on the Mac for free. I gotcha. Get it. Okay. Um, yeah, dude, I mean, it wasn't actually until the, this new air um, that the OS defaults to do a password anytime the screen goes off or whatever, and I've left it that way, and my password is so quickly to, quick to type in, I never have... Like I would have turned it off by now because I I live alone and I I don't really have that issue you know <laughs> yeah but like uh and I don't really like leave it out if I go if I go to like Starbucks I'm not gonna like leave it on the table I'm gonna take it with me to get my drink and come back with it you know like <laughs> yeah right like that kind of thing is not something <clears throat> I need I don't live I don't work in an office space right really yeah I and guess I, you would need to work in an office space right? or something and if I can just type in my password super quickly and it's not a big deal I wouldn't this is just as much of a time killer <laughs> do to do or do do is the same amount of time I guess, right? oh you could knock on the way over to your computer man <laughs> I mean I don't think gotta, it's like sit down first and type in your password I don't think it's a, like a time saver at all do you not really I think it's kind of like a cool feature 
you know, like to be able to do that. <clears throat> I guess I don't know to unlock it. I, I would just rather wonder have... if you always have to have the app open on your iPhone because if you do, that's kind of a that's kind of a deal breaker for me. This will eventually get kind of like phased out um, if uh, what's it called if Max have Touch ID on them in the next few years. You know. Yeah, which they probably will eventually. And then that will be just like bump where what are we using instead of that? Isn't there like an Apple replacement for sending contacts now? I guess AirDrop. AirDrop, which yeah, I've hardly been able but to get But still, to I mean, I would I would probably text you my address card rather than sending it to you via bump. Yeah, there's a know? reason bump's gone. <laughs> yeah. No one uses it anymore. <clears throat> this actually looks cool enough to talk about or to to to, uh, to try out and then actually talk about you know, mm-hmm. like but you should ask bucks, for a, a code. Yeah, fake doesn't work is the first review. Well, I think <laughs> they they these these poor SOBs they probably have a huge problem with people, people not reading the directions. Oh, yeah. It says right at the very top. Please check to see if your Mac is compatible. Oh yeah. So people don't. They freaking pay the four dollars and they're like, oh, it doesn't work on my two thousand seven iMac. <laughs> I'm like, and they're that, like, dude. yes, it doesn't. <laughs> I don't read anything when I when I buy stuff. You don't? You just buy it? Oh uh, man, I read everything. I mean, I guess I wouldn't leave a review yeah. like that. Like I'm not the next the next step of that guy that leaves a bad review. I'll uh-huh. just be like, why didn't it work? Oh, I'm stupid. Okay. Let me re- get you a know, refund, you know. For those people, yeah, you can get a refund. For yeah. those of you that don't know, you can you can go to Apple support <coughs> and just be like, I want my money back for this, and they'll give you your money back. I think it's within 30 days. Uh, I don't, I'm not I, sure. I'm guessing, That's how yeah. it used to be. I haven't done that in a long time. That happened to me with an iTunes song just like the other day, and I got my money back like right away. What did you, you didn't like the song? No, it was the wrong. It was a remix, and oh, it right. wasn't advertised as a remix. It was it was advertised on a different um, collection, or it like it came up on a like a collection of something like all raps hits or whatever, mm-hmm. and the other one was off their um, greatest hits album. And one was one twenty nine, and one was ninety nine cents. And I was like, "It's it, the preview is exactly the same." Yeah. So I bought the cheap one, and it was a remix. <laughs> I think you talked about this last. I was show. like, "What the hell?" Anyway, That's hilarious. All um, right, cool. Let's wrap it up there. All right, I'm wrap it up like a burrito, up. dude. Let's layer this thing up like a burrito. Onions <laughs> first, rice, beans, and then maybe meats and some cilantro. That's how I like my my burrito order to go. I like all the vegetables at the bottom. <laughs> There's like one thing of meat at the very top. And cream cheese or <clears throat> cream cheese, sour cream in the middle. Hey, uh, <laughs> you guys can uh, both listen to the show. And watch the show. We're on iTunes. Just search user friendly show. I'm gonna do my derned best, <laughs> my gersh derned best to get the audio all up to date. Good idea. Uh, probably even tonight. And uh, if you want, you can also watch us on YouTube. That's youtube.com forward slash user friendly show. I uh, believe that's all the places. Mm-hmm. If you want to follow us individually, you can do that as well. We would be delighted to talk to you about burritos on Twitter. <laughs> yeah. I'm at Airfarn. 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 E R F O N. Airfarn. And Roberto. What I about you? You are A I R F E N. Well, that explains why I never see your tweets. Oh, okay. Shit. <laughs> You're having a great <laughs> conversation with some guy on Twitter. You're like, wow, Airfarn, he's so different on I think Twitter. He's a bot or something. I don't know why his avatar is a black guy either. <laughs> I never understood why he did that. I am at Roberto Oyos, <laughs> R-O-B-E-R-T-O-H-O-I-O-S. Um, everything else I do is on throwboy.com. And, oh, I was going to say, now is a good time to place orders for throwboy.com for holidays. <clears throat> because <clears throat> I need that lead time to do all the production on it. Aha, uh-huh. yes. So uh, we now have all the pillow fighters on throwboy.com. Oh, all, you added those. Cool. All the pre-orders are still there for like the emoji pillows and the new button pillows and chat pillows and icon pillow. And ICEOs, we have a few of those left, so buy Whoa. them. Like, once those are gone, they're not going to go. Gone forever. Yeah. And, I mean, you've seen them on eBay, dude. They go for a lot of money on they eBay. They go for like $7,000 on eBay. No, but really, they go for like $200. <clears> yeah, I've yeah. seen them go even higher than that. Yeah. Anyway, uh, that's it for me. Excellent. Well, thank you for watching. You know, uh, if you'd like to leave us an iTunes review, please do that in your respective iTunes store. Yeah. I think that's all we got for this week. But uh, until the next user-friendly, keep it friendly. Keep it friendly. <laughs>